Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome. God is good. Amen. Can we give God a hand of praise today? Amen. Just get to be in the house of the Lord. Let's all stand to our feet. Sing it like we're being this morning. Jesus in me. Amen. I love the Jesus in me. Sing the Jesus in me.
love that you give to us, Lord. Truly, like this song says, because of you, Lord God, everything in our lives is so much more easier. With you, Lord, all things are possible as your word tells us. There is nothing impossible with you, Lord God. And so, Father, today as we continue to hold on to you and trust you, Lord, and learn more of you today, may you, Lord God, fill our hearts, Lord, with more of you, Lord. And that's what we seek and pray for today. Go before us, Lord God. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen and amen. Can we give God another hand of praise? Amen. Let's continue to worship, church. Oh, 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 oh,
knees this morning. Let's clap for our Lord and our Savior. We applaud you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you the glory and the honor. There is none like you that is worthy of our praise this morning. Father, we invite you into this place. Fill us with your power, Lord God. And we give you the glory and praise through your son, Jesus. And we all said, amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen. I know it's the second Sunday, but Happy New Year. Just felt like I wanted to say that again. <laughs> it still feels new, right? <laughs> Good to be in the house of the Lord. Welcome, everyone. As we continue in a time of worship, I'd like to call the ushers to come forward and receive our tithes and offerings this morning. And let's continue to worship the Lord. Amen. us with this job so that we can get back to you to help further your kingdom lord we ask that you would just bless these finances lord get into the hands of the people that need it lord we also ask that you bless our children lord in sunday school today as they learn about you lord and that you would just bless pastor dave your holy spirit would come upon him lord as we inside the sanctuary grow in the grace and knowledge of you also lord we thank you and praise you what you're going to do in and through our lives now in jesus name amen Amen. Thank you, Brother John. Good morning once again, church. Amen. Blessed Sunday to everyone that is here worshiping with us this morning. Uh, at this moment, I'd like to dismiss the Faith Vision kids to their classes. God bless you guys this morning in your study. Amen. Our scripture reading is going to be in Psalms 103, Psalms 103, verses 1 to 8. Psalms 103, verses 1 to 8. Please turn there with me, and uh, when you get there, please stand and we'll uh, read the Word of God together. As you're turning there, just a couple of announcements. Uh, men, we have study on the 11th, Wednesday the 11th at 7 p.m. This is a Zoom study. Same link, same time, different year. Amen. <laughs> different year, same book. We're going to be going through the book of Proverbs. Brother John's going to lead us through that. It's been, it's been a, a true blessing. Amen. Uh, and that is uh, pretty much our announcements for this morning. We will have more next week. But if you have the Psalms and the scripture reading this morning, let's all stand. Psalms 103, verses 1 to 8. Amen. The word of God reads like this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. 
bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Amen. He is good. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for gathering us all here, Lord God, to learn more of you, Lord, and to remind ourselves, Lord God, of how gracious, merciful, loving kindness and patient you are, Lord. You satisfy our every need. You satisfy our soul, Lord. And Father, as the psalmist writes, as David writes, Lord, let everything within me bless your holy name. And that is our prayer this morning. Let everything within us bless you, Lord. Let our actions, let our words, let our thoughts, Lord, let our worship bless you this morning. And Father, as we look into your word, our study in Thessalonians, Lord God, Father, would you continue to change us and mold us to be more like you? And we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Please make, make your way over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to continue in our study in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. We're almost done. One more Sunday next week, and we'll close out the first epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians, and we'll continue in 2 Thessalonians. But it's been a blessing so far. Amen. Uh, been a blessing to learn of all the churches that the apostle Paul writes to and all of their difficulties, their trials, but also all of their blessings as well, because it's the same thing that we go through today as a church, as a body. You know, it's nothing new under the sun, but God is the solution. And Jesus is the answer for everything that we go through. Amen. We can't say that, well, the old, you know, the, the, uh, the early church doesn't know what the modern church is going through. No, the early church does. And God knows. And he has a way out for every single one of us. And I thank the Lord that every time we open up the word of God, everything is relevant. It's, it's right there for us. And there is always an answer whenever we're in need of it. And just like the Psalm says, 103, right? He's, he's our great benefit. He's a source of all. He's loving kindness. And, and uh, he, he will never let go of us, whatever season and, and um, pain that we're going through in our lives. But God is faithful. Amen. As you're there this morning, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're going to be looking at verses 1 to 11. I, you know, the, the thing that kept coming to my mind as I was reading this was, uh, don't get caught sleeping. <laughs> And we love to sleep, I'll tell you that. You know, uh, we, yes, you know, it's been a rainy week this past week and heavy rains and all, all that. Yesterday, Friday and Saturday, we kind of got a little break from all the rain, right? And, and Saturday, yesterday are usually the days that we kind of get to sleep in a little bit. And uh, I turned, you know, Sarai and I were cuddling in bed and, and I, and I uh, turned over to Sarai and I said, don't you just love Saturdays? And she said, yeah, I love Saturdays, Dad. And and I asked her, why do you love Saturdays so much? And she said, because we get to sleep in and do nothing. And uh, I, 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 love the, I love that, you know, uh, that we get to have this one day to, to kind of just sleep in. There's nothing on the clock that has to be done, you know. There's still things to do, but we can do it as long as you do it before evening falls, right? And so that was that, that's what Saturdays kind of looks like for us. Uh, if we don't have anything planned in ministry or anything like that. So we enjoyed that. But I was reminded as, as I was reading these verses, that Paul was telling the church, man, don't stop sleeping. Stop sleeping. In other words, just wasting your life away. Perhaps we're in that situation. And sometimes, and I'll be honest with you, you know, sometimes I kind of get in that, you know, that mode. And I have to snap out of it. Like, hey, man, you know, stop Stop uh, 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 mentally sleeping and physically sleeping and spiritually sleeping. Snap out of it. There are things to do. There, you have to put your guard up because the enemy is always at work. You know, if you sleep and sleep and sleep and then all of a sudden, 
the enemy takes hold of your life, of your family, of your, you know, whatever situation that you've offered up to God, all of a sudden the devil is in the midst of it. And you don't want that. We don't want that. But Paul here reminds the church to stop sleeping. I want to say to us this morning, don't get caught sleeping. For the believer this morning, don't get caught sleeping in the work of the Lord. For the non-believer, I'll say, don't get caught slipping. Because the day of the Lord is coming. Jesus is coming. And you must be ready. What will you do when you are called home? And you've ha not had a chance to make things right with God. This message is for both the believer and the non-believer this morning. Let's look at the verses here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. To four, Paul says this, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. I think of, uh, uh, you know, married couples that are expecting their child and they're, you know, especially if it's their first child, they're, they're not experienced in what they're supposed to do. They're just ready at any given time, especially when, when the mother is near the nine months of her pregnancy and ready to deliver the baby. They're, they're ready to go. They've got their bags packed because they don't know the hour or the time or the second when, when baby's going to come and they're going to need a rush to the hospital so that she can safely deliver their blessing, right? And we're reminded this morning that God is going to come like this for us, that we must be ready. We must not have this attitude, oh, it's safe. Oh, it's, there's peace. I'm good. I don't need God in my life. Everything is working fine right now. But it's, fun, it's, it's funny, right, that, that everything is working fine, and then all of a sudden a, a destruction or a disaster happens in the family or in your life, and then you start running to God. And then for that fix, for that one-time fix, and then you run back out of God when things are back in peace and safety, as, as our verses tells us here. You know, we're running in and out of God's blessings and, and his covering over us, his, his hedge of protection over us. And we're playing with fire. We're, we're playing with disaster and destruction over our lives. But Paul says, he comes like a thief in the night and you will, must be ready for him. He says, you know this perfectly. Church, don't be stuck in trying to see the things around us. Oh, there's a war here. There's, there's something here. There's, the inflation is going up. I think he's going to come next year. Paul says, you know perfectly, I'm not writing to you concerning the times and the seasons. You know that he's going to come. You just need to be ready because he's going to come like a thief in the night. We don't know the hour. We don't know when. But a faithful servant serves God in every moment of their lives. Amen. Not just in the good times, but he serves God also in the hardships of his life. You must be ready. And this readiness is this, church, for us who walk with God continuously is to constantly build and maintain our spiritual lives in him, improve ourselves in Christ Jesus. Amen? Last year in 2022, our theme for our church was this growing in God's word. And you know, that's, that is the essence of the Christian life is growing in God's word. Every year is growing in God's word. And our, our theme and our goal for this year is going to be different when we share that vision with you all. But how many can say that this past year was a growing experience for them in God's word? Right? Amen. I can truly tell you that for myself. You know, every time we go through the, the Christmas season and the resurrection, Sunday, resurrection season, I always learn something a little bit more from the previous year. 
You know, when I first started sharing God's word and it was Christmas season and I, you know, obviously we go to the, the gospels for the birth of Jesus. But this year, you know, when I shared about Simeon, that was something new to me as well. And Anna after that, that story. And so in these, this year, this past year, God brought me closer to him. And I learned something every single year that I didn't know before. And this is the improving that the Christian must do every day, not just yearly, annually, but it must be the maintaining and the building and improving on of our uh, Christian walk with him. This is how we become ready for his return, because we don't know when he will come. Amen. Amen. And we must be ready. We should never uh, live our lives careless or without a watchful eye of our spiritual state of our, of our lives. Or not only that, but, but also what God has called us to do. We should never neglect it, our giftings to be a blessing to others. Amen? It's good to, to focus on ourselves and make things right with God, but also there are others that are looking to you to be blessed by you and what you have to offer. You, you have a purpose and a calling in God. And let, let us not have that attitude that everything's good right now, especially for the, for the non-believer who says, I don't need God. And then wait last minute for that last breath in their life and say, Lord, I, I, I want to do something. I want to be right with you. Can you imagine the many lives that you would impact had you come before to him and served him wholeheartedly? Could you, can you imagine the peace that God would have given you had you surrendered your life to him before? And we've selfishly lived our own ways and our own lives, wanting to fulfill our own desires and not wanting to fulfill God's plan and desire for us and to live a life that is fulfilling because we've blessed others with what we've been blessed with by God. Amen? Be, be ready. It's like a thief in the night when he comes. We don't know when. Let us not look to the signs of the times around. Let us just look to the state and the sign of our spiritual walk with God and be ready when he comes. Amen. Verse 4 and 5, let's read. It says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness. So that this day, the day of the Lord that he's talking about, that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. Praise God. Amen. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Church, this is your identity. It is, it is in Christ Jesus. You are sons of light, sons of the day, and not of darkness. That, that word sons also pertains to women as well. In, in other words, mankind, mankind, male and female. God created us, and so we are all sons, the church, the body, of the light of the day. Notice what he says. Don't let this thief overtake you. Have you allowed the, the, the enemy to overtake your thought process? How about your emotional process? Uh, your joy? Has he, has he overtaken your joy? Has he overta what has he overtaken in your life in 2022? Are you ready to give it up in 2023? Will you give it up? to Jesus in 2023. Amen. We've given it up so easily for the enemy. We've allowed the enemy to come in and overtake. You know, the enemy just shows up at the door. He hasn't even knocked or said anything. He just shows up in his appearance and you just submit. <laughs> and here is Jesus as Revelation speaks about, he's coming and he's wooing you. He's, he's trying to build a relationship with you. He's knocking at the door of your heart and yet you still close the door on him. But here comes the enemy. You just surrender everything to him and he overtakes you. And then the reward that the enemy gives us is nothing but brokenness, death. Oh, but I love John 10, 10, the latter verse, the latter part of that verse. He comes, Jesus comes to give you life 
and life abundantly. Amen. Amen. And he comes and he gives us something new that we've never felt, thought, or experienced. This is what 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, the blessings and the promise of the Lord is this, is that if you submit to him and he makes you new, this is what happens. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Amen? Because you're a son of the day, son of the light, son of Jesus Christ. Amen? He says, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Praise the Lord. He, Paul didn't say some things become new, right? Some things have passed away. He says all things, and all things have passed away. All things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. This is what I'm talking about, church. The enemy has come and, has come and overtaken our giftings and everything, but yet God renews us and gives us a new life and he desires for us to serve him and he's given us a ministry of reconciliation. How do you reconcile others to Christ? By speaking to them, by testifying to them, by witnessing to them, using your gift. What is your gift? You have a desire today. We all talk. We all speak. I, guys, I know you can talk as well. When you get in that huddle of, of men that you're comfortable around, I know you can crack jokes and talk about the things that you love. But how much more the one that loved us and gave his life for us, Jesus. Paul says, all things are new. And he's given us, each and every one of us, this ministry, this service, this act of worship of reconciliation with God, but also to preach that reconciliation with others. Why? Because we are sons and daughters of God, sons of the day, sons of light. John chapter 1 verse 9 says this, the, 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 this light, the true light who is Jesus, he gives us light to every man coming into the world. And I love the light that God gives us because that light gives us this. It gives us meaning. It gives us purpose. It gives us knowledge of him. Right? Whenever you learn something new, you're enlightened. Whenever you feel like you're progressing in life, you feel like something has given you wisdom in that particular subject and you feel like you've advanced in some way. Correct, church? And that's what Jesus does. As he is the capital L light, he gives us light and he gives us salvation, blessings, joy and peace to every man who comes into this world. This is what John chapter one, verse nine says. So you and I, brothers and sisters, God doesn't want us to be the sons of darkness, but he wants us to come into the light and know the light, which is him, and then be the light. Amen. Amen. This is what uh, Matthew this morning, or our prayer this morning, the verse of the day, if you're on you version, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's ultimately God's plan for us, right? God wants to use us so that we would be the light wherever we go. You don't even have to talk about it, but be about it, right? And as you're being about it, living your life in Christ Jesus, Many will see the good works, not because of outer appearance, but because what God has done internally in our hearts. And they will praise the God that you, are, you, will, you serve today, church. Amen. And so Paul is saying to the church of, of Thessalonica, come out of this darkness. Be ready. Be reminded who you are. Don't let the enemy overtake you. Don't let them steal from you anymore. 2023, don't let them steal from you any longer. I was uh, cracking a joke with Tita last week as we were getting into the new year. And she was telling me, babe, you know, she, honestly, she was like, you, you need, a, you need a little, lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm, I'm fine. I feel good. 
She's all, a little bit of weight. It's all good. And then I started joking around, you know, I said, all right, I got it. I got it. You know, knew me in 23, knew me in 23. And even though I was joking about it, but, you know, every year, yeah, we do come to this New Year's resolution thing. But I pray that I would uh, be a better steward of my health because I do want to, to live long. Yes. Live long for my family. Live long for, for, for uh, God's purpose in my life. Live long yes. for the ministry, right? Yes. We, we need to live long and, and, and be good stewards of, of what God has planned for us. So, so uh, even though, you know, it was a joke last week, but as I meditated on it and I'm thinking about it right now, Lord, that is my prayer. New me in 23, created me a clean heart. Amen. Renew a right spirit within me. And all of us, all of us today, our identity is in Christ Jesus. Let's continue on uh, verses 6 and 7. He says, therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Here it is. Don't get caught sleeping. But let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, they sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. In the previous verse, it talked about the, the thief overtaking us. And I believe this is one of the ways, the many ways, not just one way, that the, that the enemy overtakes and he steals from us. But he steals from us and he overtakes our lives in this way, in drunkenness. And immediately, yeah, we go to alcoholism. But beyond alcohol, I will say that there are so many more forms of things and objects in our society and in our world today that cause us to be drunk. Yes, it's alcoholism. If, you know, you're drinking, you know, and you're getting drunk, and then your attitude and you're abusing, that is not of God. And what I say to the Christian is just do away with it. Do away with it. The drinking, the smoking, yes, it intoxicates us. Yes, it causes us to be drunk. In other words, the, the, the influence, under the influence of what? You put that, that blank before that. I'm under the, the influence of this. If it's not the Holy Spirit, it is some other lowercase spirit. Spirit of Jealousy, envy, anger. What is that one thing that is causing you to be drunk in? And the enemy is overtaking your life. No longer paralyzing you to the point that you cannot love. You cannot be gracious and merciful to others. And you cannot be of service to Jesus Christ. And you, you can't even live a holy life. As Paul tells us in the previous chapters, holiness is important. For us to gain heaven, we must be holy because we serve a holy God. And these very little things, which becomes big things in our lives, are the very things that hinder us and causing us to be short of God's glory and entering the kingdom of heaven. What is that thing that causes you to be drunk? Do away with it in 23. New me in 23. And that drunkenness causes you to what? Sleep. Sleep. And he reminds the church, this is what others do. Don't, you don't do this. Church, this is what others do. This is what the world does. You and I are people of God who live holy and righteous lives. You do not do this. But you and I must be watchers who are sober, clear-minded, ready to be effective in what God wants us to do. Obviously, it is to live closer to him, to be righteous, to be just and loving, but also to be effective, to be used by him in ministry of reconciliation, as he's reminded us. I mean, what do you do when you sleep? Right? When, when we go to sleep, we're basically laying down and we're just, we pray, Lord, you take control. Whatever happens, if anything happens between now and the time I wake up, if I don't wake up again, my life is in your hands. 
And this is the same attitude as the non-believer. The world goes to sleep in this attitude, whatever it is. I've been overtaken by this thing, by this object, by this liquid. And my hands are not in God's hands, but my hands are in the enemy's hands. And you do as you will. What is your purpose, thief, enemy, in my life? You take over. As I sleep in darkness at night, without the knowledge of God. And if I wake, if I wake again, Lord, or or, or they're, they're, they're giving their hands over to the enemy. If I wake, I'm going to do the same thing I did yesterday, which is continue on in my sin. A life of emptiness as the enemy has taken over. But let us not be filled with this drunkenness. Let us be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says this. Do not get drunk with wine. For that is wickedness. It is corruption. It also leads us to, to do stupidity things. Stupid things. I will use that word to be clear with us this morning. But let us be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly be guided by him. This is the amplified version for us just to break down what these words are meaning uh, to us this morning. Let us not get drunk with wine, but rather church be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, people wake up the next day as they're under the influence of this thing, whether it be alcohol or smoking or whether it be eating so much, right, that you wake up the next day or whatever it is that you've taken your fill of that is not godly. It could be many things. Watching TV so much that you stay up all night, you're not, a, you know, you're not being a blessing to others and effective to others, and then you wake up the next day hungover, hurt, in pain, broken. You, 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 perhaps you've gotten into a relationship. You wake up the next day. It's not even the person you're supposed to be in bed with, and you're, you're, you're regretting it all there's sorrow in your life because you've done something wrong we're reminded in Ephesians 5 18 don't let this thing overtake you don't be filled with this don't get drunk with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly be guided by him isn't that what the enemy does church is that he's always at battle with us, right? He's, he's always at battle with you. He's trying to tempt you in every single way and to make you fall in your walk with him. Whether you're on social media scrolling or something and there's something that catches your attention on there and he, he tries to entice you to, to stay there a little bit longer. Stop the scroll. Stop the scroll, right? And then the next thing you know, you're on social media, what, we, what you plan to be just for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, touch base with family and friends. Next thing you know, it's like an hour and a half or two hours you've been on Facebook when you could have been doing something productive or on YouTube or, or whatever. I mean, whatever it is that, it, that, that is not of significance in your life that you, you, know, you don't need to spend hours on, you know, that's how the enemy tempts us. When we could be productive in something, he overtakes us. He, he gives us a drunkenness of that thing. And then next thing you know, what is our next excuse after that? I'm tired. I want to go to sleep now. Take a little nap. Right? Church, how, how are we supposed to progress and grow in our lives and, and read God's word if we're so enticed and so fixated on the things of this world? And those things aren't, you know, those things aren't bad. It's just when we abuse them. And that's the abuse is you're on it for hours and your kids are calling you, Mom, Dad, I'm hungry. And you're like, oh, well, give me a second. And that second turns into hours. And you're neglecting the things that are important. And in 2023, let us not, ne- not like, neglect what God has put in your heart to serve him and to worship him in. And he's caused many to be drunk and to be sleepy and tired and then give the excuse, 
when it comes to the things of God, the things that, are, that matter the most, the things that are eternal, and then your excuse is this, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't want to listen. My brain is shut off because I've been, <laughs> I've been watching YouTube all night long last night, and I can't, I can't listen to you, David, talk right now. Or I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I can't, you know, whatever the excuse is, we've, we've spent it on non unnecessary things. And when it comes time to spend it well and, and steward well our life in Jesus Christ, we come up with the excuse, I'm sleepy. I'm hungry. I'm whatever. And I don't want to live for Jesus. Basically, that is it. What Paul is saying to the church and that's the same message for us today. Stop sleeping. God is coming. Church, that capital D, day, that one day when he calls up the church, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he raptures the church and we will be caught up with him. What will you be found doing? Will you be found watching YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all these things? Or will you be found worshiping God and living holy for him? When he comes. Because we are not children of the night. We are sons of light. Sons of day. Our work is done today. While we have time. This is what that, that, that meaning says in these verses. We have our work to do in the day. It is only a certain amount of time that we have. Let us do it usefully, purposefully. Because there will be a time, as the psalmist writes, there will be no praising. There will be no singing of, of glory and honor to Jesus. There will be no more chance for us to live. Another chance when we are put in the grave. Now is the time, the daytime is the time for us to do our work because our life is nothing but a vapor. Nothing but a vapor. Let's continue on verse 8 and 9. Paul says this, but let us who are of the day be sober once again. And he says, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to appoint, obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Soldiers, you are soldiers of Jesus Christ. Amen? As he says, to, to get in line for battle. You are the front line warriors of Christ Jesus in your house, in our church, here in our community. Do you see anybody else? Do you see anybody else next to you? No, it is you. You are the soldiers of Christ. You are the ones that this epistle is written for today. He says this. This is how you guard yourself. This is how you improve yourself by, by doing this. Be sober and put on your suit and breastplate and helmet. Not like a drunkard does, right? <laughs> Make sure you're tying up your shoes and putting on your protective gear so that you don't, you know, go out to battle and it's loose and then something hits you because you didn't put it on properly. But he says, be sober once again. Put on this breastplate of faith and love. I love that because that's the, that's the picture that shows us that we must protect our hearts, the very vital things of our spiritual life, the breastplate. Protect our soul. And this is it, of faith and love. The breastplate of your faith in Christ Jesus, protecting your love for your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for him, your loyalty for God, your honoring for him and no one else. May your heart be protected. And then put on the helmet of the hope of salvation so that when the enemy comes and tries to disturb and distract you, you are not wavered away, but you stand still and firm in him, not wanting to move. Amen, church. We are soldiers of God. I'm reminded of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, when Paul writes, he says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything with thanksgiving. Amen. 
And he says, let the peace that surpasses all understanding. We may not understand everything that we're going through in this life. We may not understand what God wants us to do this very next season. But he says, just do it. Put on the breastplate. Be ready. God is coming. I don't, don't know when. I don't know when, but he will come. And when he comes, be ready. Be sober. But in the meantime, the enemy is always going to be tempting us and, and getting at us, trying to discourage us not to trust in Jesus. And Paul says, put on the breastplate of your faith and love and protect it. Put on this helmet. And then he says in Philippians once again, he says, and let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. Be sober. Stop sleeping. <laughs> Wake up. Come on, let's serve God today while there is still daytime in our lives. Serve him today. Will you serve him? Speaking of, speaking of soldiers, one day, and I'll share this funny story with you. I was coming back from San Diego a few years ago after ministering, and uh, I got hungry. And I pulled over, exited the freeway, and, uh, you know, San Diego's got, you know, the naval base, Camp Pendleton and all that. So there, it's all military, uh, you know, surroundings here. I pull over to McDonald's, and I get off, and I go inside the McDonald's, and I'm ordering my... Uh, my meal and the, the lady says, you, sir, you in the military? We have a military discount. And I stood there and I said, in my mind immediately, I said, I, I you know, reminded, was remembered, I, I'm not in the military, but I'm, the, I'm in God's army and I'm going to tell her that. I'm, <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I am in the, you know, I'm in God's army. And she, uh, she laughed at me, you know, and then she said, uh, oh, that's cute. That's cute. But I'll give you a discount anyways. <laughs> she gave me the discount. <laughs> And that is true for us today. We, we are in a spiritual battle. Yes, we may not be in the armed forces here in America, but guess what? We are in, the, in, in God's army. Amen? We are battling every moment. And, and, and even though the work of our military is important, but I will say this, we will be gone from this world, but our, our work in God's army is, is important and much more important, I will say. Because it deals with eternity. Amen? It deals with eternity. Where we will spend our lives here is temporary, but eternity is forever. Where, where, where will you spend your life and your soul etern in eternity? Where will it be? I pray today that the, that decision will be in heaven with Christ Jesus. Versus hell. And separate in gnashing and hurt and pain that, is, that never ends. I pray that that decision will be made for you today to be on God's army and to do something that is useful and purposeful and meaningful that is eternal in our lives. Lastly, in verse 10 and 11, let's, let's read that together. He says, Jesus Christ, who's obtained us for salvation, the previous verses, Verse 10 and 11 says, who died for us, amen, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him, therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Praise the Lord. That's what we do every day, every Sunday that we gather, every day that we send out a text. We're edifying, we're encouraging, we're reminding, even reminding ourselves, put on the breastplate. And, and the helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation in Christ Jesus. We're encouraging one another. Hey, brother, sister, don't give up. Don't give up. If, if Jesus, ain't, Jesus ain't returned yet, guess what? You just got to keep living. Praise the Lord. It gets better in Christ. Tell me what the alternative is without Christ. Tell me what the alternative is without Christ. There is no alternative without Christ. What is it? What is the alternative? There is none. Everything fades away. Everything is temporary. But with Jesus, he promises everlasting life. Hallelujah. Amen. He promises joy. He promises 
satisfaction, contentment in him. That is our benefit, the, the psalmist writes today. Let us not forget his benefits of serving Jesus and living for Jesus. And Paul says, whether we are alive or whether we are gone to be with the Lord, for the Christian it is this, it is being present with him. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Let me read this. So we are always confident. Amen. We have confidence in Christ Jesus, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen, church. Amen. We are confident of this. Yes. Well, please rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Not only confident, but pleased. Please. That when I am, if I am here, I am blessed to be alive. But if I am gone or asleep, as the scripture says, I am with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am pleased and I am confident knowing where my salvation is. Hallelujah. See, the world doesn't have the pleasure of knowing this because they're hostile. They reject this. They reject Jesus, who gives them the pleasure of life and the pleasure of being with him. And also gives them the confidence of life and the confidence and the assurance knowing that they will be with the Lord as well when they leave this earth. But yet they're trying to find it and fill it with the empty things of this world. And guess what? They may be confident for a season, but they won't be pleased at the end of their life. But yet for the, the, the believer, for, for the followers and the Christians who love God, who are trying every day, every year to be better in him, they are confident in him, hopeful and pleased to know and satisfied that if they are absent from this world, they will be with God. But also their work will be complete when they leave this world. Their families will be taken care of. All the things that they've done will be well and okay because God is taking care of it. Amen? Amen. And God is raising up people in the same mind frame, same attitude, and same calling as you to continue on his work. God will take care of it. And I love what Paul says. Comfort one another. Edify one another. Just as you are doing. Let us continue to do that, church. Let us be ready for his return. Remind each other of the hope of, we have in Christ Jesus. Speaking of our hope, speaking of our faith in him so that others will know him as well. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, this, So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. How do people know about Jesus? By us preaching and teaching his word faithfully. By us living our lives faithfully wherever we go. By us not sleeping on our gifts, sleeping on our service and our worship unto him. By us not being drunkards, amen, but being filled with the Holy Spirit. And being confident believers in him. May, uh, may that be us today, I pray. Perhaps you're listening today. And you have been sleeping. You have been slipping from the calling of God. God wants you to come back to him and serve him. Only then will you find true peace, satisfaction, and fulfillment in serving Christ Jesus. Take it for the many of us, for myself as well who have tried things my own way, but failed. But I gave it to God. We've all given it to God, our lives and our plans. And he has blessed it and fulfilled our lives. I pray that you would receive Christ today. Answer your calling. Stop sleeping. But be awake and be sober and alert in Christ and be ready 
for that day. That day comes, and we don't know, but we must be ready. Amen? Let us pray today. Oh, Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that has gathered us and united us today, drawn us closer to you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Your grace and your mercy upon us, Lord, for the things that we've done. Then think of, Lord, and thought we're not pleasing to you. We pray for your forgiveness, Lord. Make us to be more like you. We thank you that we've been obtained, Lord, for salvation through you. And not appointed to wrath. Father, your plan for each and every one of us was to receive you and have eternal life in you. May we choose that today. May that person that's listening today that doesn't have a relationship with you, may they choose salvation in you. Father, we give you all the glory and the honor for what you are doing. Go before us. And we thank you. As we continue to pray, church, for those that are listening and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, and you want to commit your life, surrender your life to him. The enemy has overtaken you so many years of wasted years in your life. But today you want to surrender. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess of our sins and if we confess that he is the son of God, he died for your sins, and you call out his name, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that he is the son of God and died for you, you will be saved. And if you're ready today, would you simply say this prayer and mean it from your heart? Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I've run away for so long. And I've surrendered to the enemy so many times. But today, I surrender to you. And I no longer run from you, but I run to you to be my Lord and Savior. Be that today for me. Teach me as I follow you. And as I learn from you, in your name, Jesus, I pray, amen and amen and amen. Amen. If you said that prayer today, we give God the glory and the honor. If you are a believer and you haven't been baptized, feel free to let us know. Uh, we, we'd love to baptize you and take your next step in your faith in Christ Jesus. If you said that prayer this morning, let us know as well. We love to provide you with resources so that you can build and maintain and improve your spiritual life in Christ Jesus. Amen. If there's a prayer request as well, let us know. Anyone in the house this morning, feel free to come forward. We'd love to pray with you. But at this moment, let's all stand and let's close and worship our Lord and Savior. Amen.
our prayer, Lord God. Will you prepare us, Lord? We love you, Jesus, today. Father, let your words continue to mold us, Lord, and to shape us, Lord. Convict us, Lord, of the things that we've, we've been doing that has caused us to veer away from you. Father, help us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit to be more like you and to do the things that are meaningful in our lives and give you glory. Bless your people today as we leave this place. In your name, Jesus, we pray, we all say, amen, amen, amen. God bless you, church. Greet one another. Have a blessed week. We'll see you soon. Amen. together